Um, Labour are sort of trying to, uh, to to ride out the storm about the donations and the freebies and all the rest of it. You know, I suppose eventually that row will go away, but there's still a lot of questions, aren't there, about exactly what Lord Ali actually does and what his influence is on the government. We now know, thanks to the Telegraph, I think, this morning, and the Times, um, that he has had quite a lot of influence in selecting candidates. He has had quite a lot of influence in, in funding candidates. But what else do you think he's doing? Well, I think the problem is that we don't actually really know. Um, so one of the things I find concerning about Lord Ali is that he's not just going for these front bench Labour MPs. He also gave £10,000 to Luke Conlon. He's just a backbench MP at the mm. moment. He's the, actually the son of Sue Gray, who's also been making headlines recently, probably not for the reasons that she would like mm. to be making headlines. The, the problem with this government is, had they not had pretended that they are so honest that they are so different from this previous government that it's going to be... I mean, you could see from Keir Starr's manifesto, it said change, big red lettering, change. We will be a change from the administration that has come before us. And instead, immediately what we've seen is that all of these issues they've claimed of, of cronyism, of what seems to be like cash for favours, well, they're dealing with the exact same problems. But this time, they're not apologising. You know, say what you like about the Tories, but at least when they got caught out, they had the gall to say, I'm sorry. Mm. I mean, you know, you have Bridget Phillipson going on television at the weekend, grinning when she was talking about how she'd be given £14,000 to have a birthday party. You know, I, I just feel that they are so confident because they've won this massive majority that they feel that any kind of press scrutiny is, is beneath them somehow. That they don't even have to engage in that process right. or even apologise. Well, isn't it funny how they've gone from saying that, uh, you know, they would end cronyism, they would end the culture of sleaze, and now when they've been caught out, they've actually just they defended themselves by saying, well, everybody else has been doing it for such a long time. Have a look at what Wes Streeting reacted to when he was asked about it last night. I'm really proud of people who want to contribute not just their time and volunteering but their money to our politics. It is a noble pursuit just like giving to charity and we don't recognise that enough. The alternative is we ask taxpayers to fund our politics. I think they'd rather their taxes went into the NHS and our schools or stayed in their own pockets. It's so going to a Taylor Swift concert, a noble call. I'm sure Keir will shake it off but let me say Nick, I'm absolutely delighted in the BBC's newfound conviction that no one should be paid more than the Prime Minister Minister, that they shouldn't give or receive hospitality and will judge the performance on the social media mentions. I mean, that's quite a disingenuous and smug way to deal with a question, which is quite an important question, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can tell he's having a fun time at conference. <laughs> he's got, yeah. you know, grin that's splitting his face in half. But, but this is the problem. Every single Labour person that's been asked so far has done exactly what they accused the Tories of doing. They've turned around and they've pointed the finger at people at the BBC or p other people in the media. They go, well, You've got a high salary, so that means it's okay. It's like, well, how do you not have been so high and mighty for so many years beforehand, mm. pretending that you are different from everybody else? This wouldn't really be as big a scandal. And also, I, I must say about this Taylor Swift tickets thing, the idea that MPs who are, frankly, they are paid a very good wage. I know there are discussions about whether or not it hasn't been raised enough in recent years. Regardless of that, they are still paid significantly more than the average person in Britain. If you were working in the private sector and you were being offered tickets to go to a concert, or if you were being offered some kind of freebie by somebody that may have some sort of conflict of interest, you would be fired. You would at the very yeah. least have some kind of HR. I would be fired. I would never even think of doing something like that. I would like to have free tickets to a Taylor Swift concert, right. but you can't take them. That's well, no. part of being I mean, ever, Exactly. Ever since this, this row sort of started a week or more ago, maybe two weeks ago now, uh, I've had so many communications from people uh, who have phoned in, who have left voice messages, who have sent messages in, saying, you know, in, the, in their place of work, in the business that they work in, you know, there is such a thing as the Bribery Act. There are things that you cannot accept, yeah. and you can accept something up to a very low amount of, of, of money value, sort of under £100 or something like that, but even then you have to tell your boss that you got it. And it is this kind of ludicrous entitlement that they seem to think they can have, and they don't even see that ordinary people in this country, people, even those who voted them in, are sick to death of it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the, the point is, they, they were making uh, a good argument, I think, about issues of sleaze in politics 
in what people perceive as, you know, dodgy COVID contracts mm. going to people's maids about not knowing where this money is going. Just because you declare it, by the way, doesn't mean that it's okay. No. If you just declare, I've taken loads of money. That doesn't take the stain away. This is something they also don't seem to understand. There is still a desire amongst the public to see a change. I don't think it's good enough, actually turn around and go, well, everyone's doing it, so I guess that's fine. You know, we need to get to the root of this issue. Well, we go to MPs, I'm sorry, this is never acceptable. And maybe if we need to even look at having higher wages, I mean, I'm not necessarily sure that's the thing we have to do. But actually, where's Streetly, what he said about, you know, charity from the public? Well, you know, either you make do and get on with it, or we talk about raising their wages, but what you can't do is cozying up to business interests, cozying up to these big mm. millionaire donors, and taking the money and then acting holier than now. Well, this that is the other thing work. that people have, have sort of passed passed by a little bit because it was a story that kind of broke in the midst of the, 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 the sort of donor gate row, but about this new um, hedge fund that's based in the Caribbean, uh, which gave the Labour Party £4 million just as the election was announced, so they didn't have to declare it before the election. But this is an organisation, again, I couldn't care less um, what people do and how they make a living, but the Labour Party should because this is an organisation that has investments in arms dealing, uh, investments in fossil fuels, investments in all the things that they say they hate, but they've, yet they've taken the money. The Labour Party also always used to say that it was proud to be funded by its members. Right. And what you actually saw uh, when Keir Starmer became leader is that a lot of membership left the party. So the party nearly went bust at one point, I believe, in 2022. Yeah. So you can tell that they were scrabbling around, going, where are we going to get this funding from? Where are we going to get this money from? And do I think they've done their due diligence there? I'm not sure. I think the same thing, by the way, does apply for the Tories. I, I do worry about how our political models are being funded at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but right. I just don't think the answer is to take millions of quid from people that we don't really know anything no. about. Well, I mean, I don't know if you saw my show yesterday. I had Dale Vince on yesterday, and I was talking to him about all of this. He said that he's given £5 million to Labour, and he gave it to them just before the election. Uh, he didn't give it to any individuals, he gave it to the party. And I said, what did they do with it? And he said, I don't know, and I don't care. And I was like, well, surely you must have some kind of accountability. Um, he said, well, they won the election with it. And that was his answer. And so as long as you've got people who've got that much money, that there's no account, they don't even know what the Labour Party are doing with it. I mean, how do we find out? Well, exactly. I mean, Dale Vince, by the way, he's obviously a very wealthy man. Do I believe that he doesn't know anything about what that five million quid went? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, this is someone who, like many private individuals, um, has some sort of political views that they would like to see promoted. That's completely legitimate, by the way. But that is something that we should be aware of. You know, if you are spending millions of pounds, then it is likely that your voice will be listened to at least first over other people. And um, that's why people give money to politics in the first place. They don't normally do it just out of the kindness of their heart. Right. Yeah, again, there's nothing wrong with this. This is just the way that politics works. Um, but I think the public should probably have an understanding about how the system yes. does actually operate. It's yes. not charity. I mean, one of the things I'd like to know is exactly what Gary Neville is up to. He's up at the Labour Party conference as well. He was um, complaining yesterday that there was too much scrutiny on the Prime Minister. Have a look at what he says to ITV. 10 weeks in, what did you expect them to achieve in 10 weeks? I mean, ultimately, if you become CEO of a new company, you'd just be bedding in and you'd be allowed a period of bedding in, wouldn't you? I mean, it seems to me that they're being given a bit of a rough ride on certain things that the previous government didn't seem to be given a rough ride on. Rishi's £40 million helicopter contract seems to have been sort of forgotten about. We'll concentrate on a few tickets for an Arsenal match. But you think in time it can come good? Well, let's see. I mean, ultimately, I'm a Labour Party member, but I'm also open-minded to know that in government it's going to be challenging and they've got five years to try and prove it. I don't think we should judge them after ten weeks. Yes. Gary Neville was not a very good manager when he went to um, Valencia. Um, he was quite a good footballer. Um, I think he's a pretty hopeless political analyst, don't you? Yeah, I quite agree. I mean, the idea that it's the press that sets the agenda for stories and not the public right. that sets the agenda for stories and the press catches up. You know, it's, it's wishful thinking to believe that there would be no scrutiny on Keir Starmer if there wasn't for this supposed double standard. You know, any again, anybody working in the media can tell you that during Partygate, during all the stuff that was going on with the Conservative Party, they were getting out every day because it was something that made people angry. You know, uh, I, I just don't believe this whole we have to give the Labour Party an easy time because they haven't been in government for a very right. long time. That's ridiculous. Well, we have to give them scrutiny because there's no opposition, really. The Tory party is a tiny, tiny rump at the right. moment. And you know, also the if, Tory if, party... If Tory party being led by Rishi Sunak, who's basically in semi-retirement. He doesn't really ever have much oh, to yeah. say about anything. You know, we haven't but, seen hide nor hair of him responding to Rachel Reeves. We haven't seen hide nor hair of Jeremy Hunt responding to Rachel Reeves, have we? 
No, no, we haven't. I mean, it kind of does feel like he's just watching the clock and going, "When can I go to California? Yeah. Get me off this, <laughs> get me off this island." Exactly. But you know, I, I think I think you're completely right. You know, the, the idea that um, uh, this long leadership contest was a good idea has clearly been proved to be wrong. But somebody has to hold the government accountable for what they're doing because yeah. they are making decisions that are affecting people's lives. You know, uh, the idea that we can't talk about that is just ridiculous. Yeah. The other fu funny moment I thought yesterday was when Rachel Rees was speaking um, right at the beginning uh, and suddenly there was a heckler. Um, and the heckler was taken down rather pretty brutally, by the way, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Let's have a look. Competence, their dishonesty and their rule breaking. Um, he complained later, the, the protester, that he, that he was grabbed around the neck, he was handcuffed and dragged out, right? Um, and at one point, one of the uh, one of the assailants or the, the, the bodyguards or whatever security called him a weasel. Um, and he said he was a bit disappointed <laughs> because he thought that, you know, he was a supporter of Labour uh, who had fought long and hard for the right to protest. And Rachel Reeves even said, we are no longer the protest party. So what's gone wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I quite agree. I mean, it, it gives you something of a student common room, doesn't it? The kind of uh, wild circulating. I, I think they quite like the idea of being filmed when they're doing this big performative act of protest there. And I do actually think that was quite a good smack down there for Rachel Reeves saying, well, well, again, we are not the party of protest anymore. Mm. Um, but to be fair, that's not to pay for facts within the party. There are probably more people in that hall. Uh, the, the party would like to admit that they actually agree with some of this man's views, and this was on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Yeah. You know, the idea that Labour is completely united under Keir, um, I don't think is true now. It's probably not even true amongst this front bench. No. If anything, well, Angela Rayner yesterday was 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 seen hugging the um, uh, the pa Palestinian uh, representative, the Palestinian Authority representative uh, in London, who was up at Labour Party conference, uh, and they had a sort of little fringe meeting, uh, and there was a lot of hugging going on. I haven't I haven't seen very much activity uh, from any Jewish groups up there. Yeah, exactly. In fact, I, I, I do believe, and I, I'll be careful here because I'm not exactly sure where I saw it, but um, I do believe there was some complaint yesterday that there was a back and forth between their um, Labour Friends of Israel group and, and some other grouping near them. But again, I'm, that's not totally confirmed on my end. Okay. There is still very much strong tensions within the party on what to be done in the Israel-Palestine conflict. And I think as this government progresses, and if the polls continue to kind of slump, 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 you're going to see more of these internal wars that were papered over while everybody thought, let's just quit, let's win the election, right. let's get the Tories out, then everything will be fine. Well, unfortunately, that's not how politics works. No. So uh, I imagine Labour Conference next year will be seeing a few more protesters getting up and uh, probably being thrown out. And I'll, make, I'll, make a, and I'll make a bet with you now, next year politics will be even more interesting because I don't think Sue Gray will be involved in it anymore. Well, yeah, but well, there has been reports that potentially she may be uh, kicked out after they have a conference, or at least that Keir Starmer is going to be dealing with her. I mean, if you're if you're an advisor or you know chief of staff in that way, you never become a story. You know, Dominic Cummings didn't become a story for about two years. Mm. She's been quite impressive. She's done it in about two months. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm not sure how tenable her position is anymore. But at least she can enjoy her salary for a little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely right. Poppy, thank you very much indeed. Poppy Coburn, their assistant commenter uh, at The Telegraph. Let's get a voice note from Brian on Labour. Morning, well, Mike. Brian from Southend here. Uh, just on that Labour Party uh, clown fest. Uh, I hear today that Keir Starmer's going to speak and he's going to sort of tell everyone there's light at the end of the tunnel. Let's hope it's its resignation. Well, he's the one that tunneled us into the tunnel in the first place, isn't it? I mean, we were above ground until Keir Starmer took over, and now we're underground, and we're trying to find our way out, and he's not being very helpful. Uh, Chris says this, How come when a police officer accepts a gift, it's a bribe? But when an MP does it, it's a donation. A gift or donation is given when you've done something or open to do something. Great show, Mike. Yeah, well, Chris, absolutely right. Of course it's a bribe. Of course they want something in return. Of course Dale Vince was talking absolute rubbish yesterday when he said he didn't know what they'd done with the money. And of course Lord Ali doesn't want to be asked questions about it. But that's what the journalism here is supposed to be doing, getting answers from these people. We'll keep trying until they give them to us.